Aloha, this is Gary at Garage Monkey Sawn. This is the third episode in my hashtag Save a Microwave series where I make things from a discarded microwave. This project was inspired by the late Grant Thompson, the king of random. Back in 2012, Grant built a spot welder using a microwave transformer. This got my attention in a couple of ways. First, it's a rare tool. You don't see many spot welders in home shops. It's a shame because spot welding is an easy way to join two pieces of steel together. Both soldering and welding take some practice. Spot welding is so easy, a child could do it. Which brings us to the second reason for this project. I have fond memories of learning how to spot weld. It brings me back to my early teens, shop classes, and early morning summer days. My parents forced us to take summer school every year. The only good thing about that is they let us choose which classes. Of course, my brother and I always picked shop classes. I come from the city of Stockton. It's located in California's Central Valley just 50 miles south of the state's capital, Sacramento. During the summer, temperatures would reach well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I was a substitute paper boy and I remember one time delivering paper in 114 degree heat. I remember my sweat dripping onto the neatly folded newspapers as I lugged the 40 pound satchel from door to door. Summer school was held at a nearby high school. The metal shop class had both a forge and a foundry. The shop was large, but would heat up like an oven by noon. Back then, the schools weren't air conditioned. Memories are funny. I don't recall the heat. All I remember was the joy and excitement in learning how to manipulate metal forging a railroad tie, peeing in an ashtray, or casting aluminum. The smell of green sand is a memory trigger for me. We learned about gas and arc welding, but the first hands-on experience was spot welding. Our shop teacher found giant enameled sheet steel from the local cannery. One side of the sheet was shiny silver, the other a golden hue. On a large foot break, we'd cut up smaller squares. Our assignment was to create a box. Take a two-dimensional object and create a three-dimensional cube, much like origami. He then taught us how to draw out the pattern with appropriate tabs. Using metal scribes, we scratched the lines onto the golden side. We cut it out with tin steps and folded it up on the finger break. We learned about the order of operation. The bends needed to happen in certain order, otherwise you couldn't finish the box. Some of us had to learn this the hard way, and we were forced to try to unfold the bends we just made. The pattern he gave us included tabs or ears. Once folded up properly, it was obvious the tabs were meant for spot welding. The spot welder was a huge floor standing model. The base was a rectangular box about four feet high. Protruding from the base were two long arms, each having copper electrodes shaped like arrow tips. It had a foot pedal which lowered the upper arm so that the electrode tips touched. When we turned it on, it would hum. You could hear and feel the power surging through it. However, using it was straightforward. With two hands holding the box seam on the lower electrode, pressing down on the foot lever, you'd hear this loud buzz and watch the electrode get red hot. Then it was over. You'd lift off your foot from the lever and move the box to the next spot to be welded. 
Sure, the first time was scary, but after a while it became second nature. At the end of the assignment, we each had a tin box. I don't recall what happened to that box. It was lost in the many moves since that time. But with that lesson in hand, we were free to make anything we wanted. Others in the class made more boxes. I challenged myself to make something different. I had a gas model car, a Cox 049 Chaparral. Being inspired by Big Daddy Ed Ross creation, I wanted to create a new body for it. Using cardboard, I carefully drew a profile using only straight lines. From there, I made a pattern using the roof as a common fold surface. I added tabs where the body panels could be spot welded together. After scribing the pattern onto the tin sheet, I cut it out with tin snips. Next to the metal break, where I carefully folded all the seams. Lastly, I used the spot welder to tie it all together. Everyone was impressed with my car body. Me, not so much. It looked like a tin box turned upside down. I never did run the gas model car with a new body, which was probably for the best. After all, in essence, it was a sharp metal projectile traveling at high speeds, a severed Achilles tendon waiting to happen. In the end, the lesson wasn't about the car body. It was about learning and gaining experience. Making patterns, cutting and folding sheet metal, and using the spot welder are skills I'll always carry with me. For me, it isn't what's made. Rather, it's the process of making. Yes, spot welding is limited in its use. You can only spot weld thin steel. But thin steel is everywhere. Discarded refrigerators, ovens, dishwashers, washers, dryers, filing cabinets, all made of thin sheet steel. Pallet wood isn't the only material we can upcycle. So hashtag save a microwave, build a spot welder, make some stuff, create good memories. I know when I use my spot welder, it'll take me back to those summer school shop days. Mahalo for watching.